a little bit of unconventional style. That's what I was thinking with the Mars. You know, it's uh, mid players that does like to switch it up a little bit. I've seen his Pango all too much in the mid lane. record out of the two teams slightly so uh, they got, they've got that playing into their advantage and seems like he's been on a tear recently he's sitting at a KDA of 6.7 pretty nuts yeah Dreamer Cell as well is a 6.5 flashes that's for sure but a bit the killing lineup it's basically just trying to create a little bit of space try and around the map to them as opposed to trying to defend against this all-out onslaught that they've got. <laughs> Not the extra love. Interesting or weird going on. Droid just gonna come down here and quickly snag the outpost for themselves. But Boom are swapping it around a little bit. They've got the Centaur down in the safe lane, and uh, does seem like they want to go for maybe a little bit of an, an aggro lane. They've even got the Orb of Venom picked up on the Mars. And we're clear for running. Yeah. I want to see what happens, what the response is from Adroit here. Like, are they gonna are they gonna bring Tiny over? Are they gonna bother trying to pressure this Centaur down bottom? And like, how quickly will the rotation happen after the? after it's immediately obvious what's happening up on this top lane. It's not a particularly strong, uh, not the most amazing tri lane in the world. Right, maybe they've got some like toss back potential or something, but. His family will understand. Yeah, I think he just didn't want to mess with the Equilibrium too much at first, but they're, they're double range creep now anyway, so... Not really the end of the world. Bit of damage onto CML here, but... Then just the Tango his way through and uh, gives a little back. That's him. He has already used the Rolling Axes. We'll just be able to walk away. Boom, we'll maybe looking to utilize the side pull or something here. I'm kind of wondering if Hydra's going to pull this over as Dream of Cell finished off those two creeps, but seemed like the plan. So for now, Boomy's still just chilling down here at bottom. Uh, he's just been denying for the most part. They are kind of keeping the dual lane going. They do already have level two on both of them. FBZ getting zoned back a little bit. See him out, blocked out a little bit here, and looking for the chase down. One more touch will be the Shaker grabbing that first blood. So. Nice timely Tranquil Boots, and hopefully a timely Blink Dagger. Oh, Avalanche 
at your bottom. They got the toss available. Maybe waiting for a few more hits before they go for the toss. Boomy trying to stay in the right position, but now it just kind of comes down to luck as they're in the middle of the creep wave. FPZ is going to get this salve off. That's the last of his regen. He's looking to bury out a little bit more. CML again blocked in here. Let's get chewed through by some tangos and Natsumi helping him out. And now Boomy makes his rotation top, but does not have mana for the combo. Yeah, he's looking very dead. All right. Nice rotation. Keep the clarity going. And uh, can they get the D ward on their pole camp? That would be pretty nice. CML has picked up another sentry. Moving back into position to get this immediately. Or they're not going to get a camp until. So. The immediate Fisher Nightmare also under the Troll Warlord. Still damage under the Shaker. Hyde getting chased down. Couple more punches. Boomy chasing for it. They managed to spear Natsumi under the tower, but he's pretty tanky on this troll. Ten armor, so uh they're not gonna be brought down easily. There. SCA has been on the multi-courier stuff since Dota 1. I remember, you know, there there was a time as Boomy, all right, not going to get to keep that regen. There was a time where the, the SCA meta was one dedicated courier for bottle crowing and one uh, courier for everybody else. So, yeah, they've, they're, they're definitely familiar with the, the old courier micro. For now, I think things looking pretty good for Boom. The Morphling farming nicely. Uh, the Mars and the Centaur are both getting pretty good CS. A lot of pressure on Mac, I feel, this game to really get a whole lot done with the Tango. Denied. Battle for the bounties. He's over here. I think they want Kez cute instead. He's gonna nightmare up and he gets tossed straight back into the troll nice. warlord. There is a fissure to split things up nicely, so Kez cute gonna keep on running. Avalanche connecting on everyone. Boomy just wants to run for the bounty. Uh, but Makoto's already over there grabbing it, so uh, he's just gonna tank a few auto attacks to wave for him through, and then the adaptive strike if he carry on top, finishing him off. You do not want to be feeding kills to this morphling. Damn. wand here. Let's get the nightmare out and immediately gets grabbed back. Boomy, you're gonna look for the toss back. He gets it over onto the troll. There is a fairy fire for Kevki. Actually gonna opt to pop that even. But CML quickly nukes him down. Uh, still continues to be trades up here. Uh, I guess it remains to be seen who is actually happier with the fact that all these trades are going on. Because I don't think the Morphling was at much risk of getting ganked anyway, but maybe this is giving a better start to the Centaur than he would have gotten otherwise, though it is coming at the cost of quite a lot of farm on this position 3 pug now. So that's where the aggression can really start to ramp up for Detroit. Bacarino starts coming for your towers. Well, that's not good. Fortified structures can't be breached. I could. Dyer's middle tower is under pressure. Morphling really just tanked this up the whole time. Stampede getting popped. Looking for a kill at bottom, perhaps? Okay, Stomp finally comes out. FPZ still chasing with the seven retaliate stacks. Spock is going to be okay. Now, Makoto actually tanked up the tower the entire time to let the siege creep do its work on this tier one. So tons of damage being dealt uh, by Boom out of that rotation on the mid lane. And now he can just, because attribute shift is a bullshit ability, he can just... Uh, he can just generate a bunch of free HP and keep going.
Ne. Next wave's coming in. Push back. No, not really. Okay, so here comes the blast. This is not normally the highest priority tower on the map, but I think Adroid just trying to get their game going a little bit. Sense are going to TP in front of everything. I think it's more of a scare tactic than anything else. And Bok getting a nice little drain off there. Really making his mana back. Man, lots of pressure up top. They force a couple of rotations, and this is now maybe where Adroit can swap over to bottom and look to pressure here, but it's just a full lane swap. Dream Cell now comes down to the bottom side, and Boom still continuing to be very insistent about holding on to these tier one towers, even if it's their off lane tower. Device is next. Dyer's middle tower is drowning. Yeah, and it's all space for the morph at the same time. We do have a toss back. Uh, hide on top of Bach. Boomy, no spells currently. The life drain is coming back off cooldown in a second. He's also got another blast. FPZ trying to run interference on the front lines. Down at bottom, they are making a little bit of a go on the CML waveform through. Maybe an unexpected rotation from this Morphling, but nets him a kill, and now they're immediately smoked up heading over. I believe this was scouted by the... Well, even if they didn't have the Dire Ops, I think that may have been quick enough after the kill that... Still would have had an idea that it's going on, but... Yeah. <laughs> Still fun. Makoto is just rushing E-Blade this game. Uh, it does make the... Like, on the one hand, Oracle, if you're on point, sure, Fate Seedic is going to help out a lot, but all of that burst damage is also really scary to play against uh, with having to try and time your, your ulti. Let's see what happens. Ooh, droid. <laughs> Triple, all right, they just... <laughs> Bounty. It worked. Dyer's Good for boom. Pressure. Pressure. Bounty. Yeah. Bounty. Radiant's bottom tower is staggering. Like a drunk sailor. Radiant fortified their structures. Attack the hero. tower is under attack. Radiant's bottom tower faces a stiff win. Yeah, every single time a droid kind of commits any TPs anywhere, the, the boom heroes are just immediately shoving uh, elsewhere on the map. Right, mid lane getting slowly pressured down by the catapult. Uh, top lane also getting pressured down by the morphling plus the catapult. Uh, nobody's getting tower CS here, but it didn't matter too much. I didn't go on a little bit. It's going to reveal the fact that they have a ward over here. Mac looking for the chase, does get the proc, and just gonna go for the Rolling Thunder to finish this one off. Hide with the fancy footwork, but it's not fancy enough. And, uh, Dream Assault actually came over there to have a look at what was going on. Looks like he should be okay, though. Dyer's top tower is about to take the plunge! Dyer's top tower is about to take the plunge! Yeah, and Kezkut's got his Fiend script now, so can look for a kill on pretty much any core, uh, really wherever he wants. If they just continue, if they can hold this mid tower, I think you've got to be pretty happy on, on Boom. That's really controlling a lot of space. Like you mentioned, the, the early rush on is certainly a possibility for a droid, and uh, you really want to keep the Morphling's farming space nice and safe currently. Uh, Natsumi is going for a Battle Fury on this Troll Warlord, so... Maybe hoping to get away with a slightly greedier build, maybe not going for a BKB, and instead relying on like an SMY Satanic or something. Seems to be the insurance policy, I suppose. Nightmare, it, it makes for the easiest arena in the entire world. Uh, yeah. 
Dyer's courier has been killed. It does kind of suck for a droid that they don't have uh, a little bit of pressure on a Makoto character. Um, just, just some life for Bach, but uh, it sucks that a droid have not been able to, you know, establish themselves in the Radiant Jungle at all. Boomer actually controlling a ton of the map currently, uh, both being able to farm up here on the, the top side and you know, Dream of Cell taking these camps away. Over in Radiant so, I gotta try and break out of this hold a little bit, and I think that's really where we have to look to this uh, this Mac Pangolier. But he's not having the best of games. He's the lowest farmed among all the cores. We've seen one kill from him so far, but otherwise it's been kind of quiet from the mid lane. Is he going to come up this hill? Yes, he is. Straight into the Fiend's Grip. Nobody even TPing to try and help out. They do have their attack coming in from the Pango, but that's just straight into a Fissure. A little bit of swashbuckle damage, but nothing else really found. CML just grabbing a little bit of farm at mid. Right? Can't imagine that they're very happy with the way that things are going currently. Actually, the win probability even getting up to 86% currently with the lead that gotten just out of some really nice rotations and solid play in the in the early game Quick stone. oh rolling thunder gets used but blocked out and boomy was charging through with a haste but Stampede gets popped and everyone on Boom just out of there. And straight back to farm stations. FPZ shoving out top wave. Dreamer Cell moving down to bottom wave. And uh, the support's holding down mid. Hyde actually going to have a very timely blink dagger here, Danog. <laughs> it's so painful for a droid that this more found plays. Two zero and one already has the full eagle song picked up. Be a scary fast e blade. And just anyone on the map at that point is going to be food. All right, so a droid they go for a smoke underneath their sentry. Making sure that this wasn't scouted. We do have the Aether Lens up on the Pugna. I think they really want this mid tier 1 tower, but forcing it might be a little bit difficult. They are going to try to make the jump on the Dream itself. He's relatively tanky. Keski waiting behind him. The Nightmare also looking to help out, so Dream of Cell going to be okay. Oh man. Oh, they're actually, they've still got a little bit of vision over here from where they killed the Pugna earlier. So that's just where they're going to smoke to. Uh, Radiant structures are fortified. Yeah, well, the, the smoke broke and they do have a ward on the high ground, so CML knows what's going on. And I think he's just trying to put his body on the line here. Back looking for the Rolling Thunder. He's got the shield crash. Can he find the right targets? Dream himself kind of low from that earlier initiation. So it looks like it's just going to be a one for one bucker on the low ground. Finding the shaker. Kezku does get the fiend script out. Pretty much full duration on the back. And Makoto's coming in looking for the turnaround. Three dead already on the side of a droid, and boom, not done. Still gonna chase down Boomy into the tree line. He does have an Avatos combination available, but I think just hoping to juke this one out if possible. Buying a little bit more time. The Troll Warlord not at all interested in getting involved. FPZ has pretty much blocked in. They are gonna toss him over out of the Troll Warlord now. This is decent damage. CML also making the rotation, but Makoto's there to finish off the job. And now forcing out the False Promise underneath the tower. Just nothing stopping this Morphling. The Centaur is still looking plenty healthy. And that will end up being, what, a f like a 4 for 2 or something in favor of Boom? Yeah. Cool. Dyer's top tower is under attack. 
So one thing I didn't even catch this game, Denog, but you know we were talking about like, oh yeah, there isn't really anybody good to morph into on the enemy team. Well, uh, Mikoto definitely agrees because he hasn't skilled any points in the morph just yet. Now they're setting up a kill on the Boomy. Looking to nuke him down. Nice. Fate's Edict is going to keep him alive a little bit longer. And here comes Bok with the heal. Boomy not dead yet. Mac rolling through the fight. Unfortunately, they will still end up losing their tiny. And the fact that Boom can even play over here is kind of ridiculous. But Troll are not at all interested in getting involved. He's at the bottom. Dyer fortified their structures. Dyer's top tower is about to take the plunge. Dyer's top tower. He doesn't have any vision on the outpost. No control of it. So he's just gonna have to back up. Kezkyu finds himself an invis. So he's actually. I don't even know if he would be dead without the invis. But. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Yeah, I think Mac had swashbuckle, right? So he probably close the gap. <laughs> yeah. And Rolling Thunder as an ability doesn't really. You know, a lot of Pango's abilities don't really scale that much with farm. Sure, the swashbuckle is good, but nothing else is really benefiting that much. So, uh... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, then eventually you can start looking at something like that, but... Dreyte just not planning on dealing with this morphling early at all, right? Nobody was trying to rush a vessel or anything like that. There is one queued up on Mac now, but... Uh, it seems like a droid kind of having to shift into a different gear. Playing for the late game on their Dyer's Troll Warlord, also kind of playing attack. for the late game on their Pango, and uh, just hoping that they're going to be able to hold the high ground against this Boom onslaught. Dyer's bottom tower is about to flounder. Oh, they send up that Sumi. They do have the false promise available. They're going to have to throw it out as they see the Morphling coming towards him. The Spear and back to do it. The heal is also coming in from Bach. Mac making the space, rolling through, but the Stampede gets popped. That Sumi still pretty healthy, but. They've got the re-engage yeah. if they want it. Oh, they've got a Fiend's Grip on the other side. Boomy getting caught out. Makoto just gonna go for the auto attack to finish that off. And here comes Dream of Cell. He's got the Spear. They don't even need it. They've got the Echo Slam from Hyde. He's taking big damage off of the Nether War. But now they're looking for a little bit more. That Spear to the backside, finishing off Mac. And, uh... Adroit not getting anything out of this fight whatsoever, Dan. Yeah, again, exact same scenario. You've got this Pangolier using his Rolling Thunder through. Sure, it lets them survive, and... I think you just need to uh, accept the fact that Boomy was gone, but overstaying their welcome a little bit. And again, that reinitiation from Double Blink Daggers coming out early on. I'm talking about a bit of a greedy style, but Photo has made it work with his aggressive play and uh, how well he won that mid lane. Yeah, the, the rotations and just the movements to be able to get all of those early towers with this kind of a lineup and then create all the space where this greedy Tricor was still able to get everything that they needed. Um, you know, we were talking about a Roshan before, and right, but it could even just be Boom taking it out. Spear onto Boomy. CML coming over to try and help out a little bit, but he's also put himself in harm's way. Damage in the back lines. Pugna, he's e-bladed for now. Let's have a life drain available, and uh, actually Hyde, I think, selling himself out a little bit there. Mac, Mac. rolling forward. FPZ still pretty tanky, but that's soon we're going to find him. They do get another stun onto Makoto. Here comes Dream Cell, looking for the counter initiation. CML still alive, but one more touch to bring him down. The stick charge is actually helping him survive a little bit longer. That's soon starting to chop wood, but Kezkyu's there with the nightmare controlling the troll. He's waiting for somebody to wake him up. Just going to have to go through the full duration. Makoto does have a waveform available. He's also sizing up these adroit targets because he does have the shotgun combo once again. And here comes the Stampede, trying to evacuate their Morphling. Nice spear back. Kezkyu also putting his body on on the line, on the front lines here. A little bit more control. They do have the Fiend Script in four seconds. Adroit got to be kind of careful. Boomy may be looking for the top stack, but two-man Fisher. Dreamcell so waiting up on the high ground. He's got the spear. They popped the troll. Couldn't even get the ultimate off. Great chain stun from Boom. And just a little bit of a chase too far from Adroit. It's great seeing how uh, Boom have grown as a team, you know, across the years. It's gone from that stage where, you know, <laughs> in their open qualifiers and they were making it out of open qualifiers then they were a regular closed qualifier team then they were 
getting invited to them and then they started winning them and now they're looking like a really impressive team you know one of the top three within the southeast asian region and uh, it's easy to see why you know, great team play yeah great coordination yeah it's it, it and that's the thing like it goes when you have a lineup that sticks together for a long time uh, lucked out a little bit it has to be said uh, with some of their players just being ridiculously skilled i honestly think that makoto is one of the best i would say a top three player within southeast asia right now yeah he's certainly looking at this game and he's already got the aghanim scepter picked up well he wasn't interested in any morphs on the enemy team but uh definitely going to be interested in the the shaker combo they don't have the enchant totem like fully maxed out just yet but shouldn't be too much of an issue Trying to make a little bit of a go down here, Kez. Keep the target rolling. Thunder gonna get popped. He's not even dead yet. Double Bracer. This boy is tanky and he's got a team. Just been a nightmare to buy himself a little bit more time. The timing was not quite right. Mac trying to TP out. Two of his allies in the back lines have already been found and killed. Uh, Makoto is even just looking for a little more as he and also the chases them at Natsumi. Yeah, I should have. Uh, I should have probably looked at what the Morphling was doing there, but never mind. <laughs> need to see it folks it's been censored for your own good all it was is, is just this it's just the morphling hopping around everywhere killing the entire enemy team they're now up 11k and uh, looking like this could be a very fast game one this is a pg rated channel you didn't want to see yep. what was going on in the back lines there and, and again it's the same sort of situation you've got mac a position two committing to try and kill a pos five and sure succeeding but in that time, the rest of your team dies, and uh, you die as well from very little commitment coming from your team. You know, at least previously, when he made those uh, Rolling Thunder saves, his team could get away if they wanted to. Uh, if you're trying to do it aggressively, it just opens Fire's bottom tower is under attack. Yep, and uh, they've got the morph in another 25 seconds. They've still got the Aegis for another three minutes, so Makoto really can just play this next fight however he pleases. Power. There's He's really nothing stopping him whatsoever. They just weren't able to get that early Dyer's snowball potential off, and I'm like they were hoping on Detroit. They had that tiny Dyer's window where, you know, you can take Roshan, but how early was it that they took that, that tower? I think it was at like six minutes, maybe? As soon as Pugna started to hit his uh, his timings. Maybe it was at eight minutes. Uh, it was prior to the 10-minute uh, mark. <laughs> yep. Life drain. But they just weren't able to do anything. Here we go. Shaker morph. Activate. Makoto's hunting. Target acquired. CML. Oh. Trying to TP out one shot. <laughs> Who's next? So I wonder what this is going to do to his KDA. <laughs> Yes. Yeah, pretty healthy. Four, pretty good, pretty good. Maybe get a few more this game before it, it ends. Me got. Uh, it's trading places with the uh, Mars a little bit on the net worth back and forth. Still just trying to go for the BKB. I think he was maybe hoping to get away with the the no BKB build this game, especially having the Oracle. But yeah, it's just becoming too important. We're in. Makoto just focusing on the objective for now. We're gonna jump backwards, a little bit low on life, but does have this regenerate waiting in his bottle, so there you go. Disgusting. Yeah, absolutely just foul. But to me, it's like, can I farm this wave? Maybe not. Maybe I need to just go hit jungle creeps. Yeah. Does he want ancients? Is he gonna go like try and clear ancients at 27 for a for a neutral item? You gotta try something desperate, right? Yeah, it's got, you got no hope otherwise. You're down 15k. Yeah, the 1% the at this point is like finding the perfect neutral item and taking an instant fight with it somehow. Got a deep board here to farm around. Yeah. He spotted out those couriers before they spotted him because of that vision, and they know where he is. They're actually using the couriers to scout the neutral camps just to realize, well, that's where Natsumi probably is. And Oh, there, oh, no, no, no. <laughs> Mikoto's on the prowl. Natsumi TP's out. All right. He's, he doesn't see enough on the map. Everyone else has backed out, and knowing that, and even seeing FBZ over here, he, he knows that it's time to run. Yeah. Um, well, still got 30 seconds on this Roche timer. I wonder if they want to try and make something happen. He uses the morph. He's got the double damage. If there's any time oh, to do it, it's no. now. 
please, no. <laughs> all right, I'm just gonna put it on more. Like, yeah, just lock that camera. All, th this is what we all came to see here, folks. Going in deep. Ten seconds left. Yeah. It's pretty ballsy. Okay, glimmer cape. Good Back stuff. out. Maybe trying to bait out some some ultimates, maybe from Adroit. Here we go. Here comes the items. Orb of Destruction picked up. A droid still just relying on the strength of their high ground defense. This nether ward proving to be pretty annoying for the uh, the boom side, but I mean they're just continuing to extend this lead little by little. Kesku just going to be going for a gem to kind of 100% secure things. And, and right, what are they up to? They're just trying to give Natsumi these last couple of camps to finish off his BKB, but still actually has a little bit to go. It's a little bit later than I was expecting, but uh, Mars as well. He's finally going into the Desolator, having finished up his sustain items, and yeah, he's got the Enchanted Quiver. Fantastic with them. Haste. Well, a droid still just sitting in their base. Not a whole lot changing for them. Uh, we We're at 99% according to Dota Plus. Yep. We are going to see the 30 minute mark. Boom, still maybe a few more items to grab. We've got a full halberd on this centaur. Uh, Dream of Cells picked up the BKB. I mean, maybe they're going to wait for another Roshan. But all it's going to take is Troll World getting caught outside of the base once, and that might just be game. Natsumi is having to play so defensively. And uh, Makoto's over here laying claim to these creeps. He's got another double damage. Oh, this is, I guess it's the same DD, but... Oh, jump in, Dream Cell looking for the initiation. Nice blink out from Boomy, so he's gonna be fine. They don't find anything on mid. Makoto's been revealed. Natsumi, is he going to rush towards this wave on the left? Because right now, you can't be playing to not lose. You've got to play to try and win. So, you know, you've got to go for these risky plays because it's in such a bad spot for you right now. So paint me a word picture. Damn it. How, how does the fight go for uh, a droid that, that wins the fight? Full Agi Morph dead. <laughs> right. They, just need, they need every proc from uh, Pango. Yes. All at once in uh, just one shot oh. the more point. Oh, Natsumi! <laughs> Jesus! Alright, he's How living. How did that not connect he's onto him? He's living. Well, I didn't see that the spear, might be a good time but... for them to take this fight, right? You had three people TP to the bot side. They probably didn't see it. They might have seen two. Uh, you've got a FZ standing up here on his own, but he's got damn tanky. Helvin's Halberd, Pipe. Of course, he can just stampede away from any sort of aggression, and it feels like some of these heroes on uh, Adroit just haven't left their base in four minutes. Yeah, the centaur is just a wall. He's, he's keeping them all in there while the rest of Boom can just go and run around and do whatever they want. I feel like the level progression for some of these Adroit heroes has just completely, completely stalled out. They're trying to give everything to their cores. They really, really want this BKB on the core wheeler, but he's coming out pretty far. And is that going to be too far? Here comes Mikoto. He's on the way. They've nightmared him up. Spear is going to connect. CML doing his darndest to keep him alive. They just love the false promise. Two thirds so of his much. HP just gone. It's a morphling as well. He's got agility. <laughs> yep. Uh, he's got plenty of it. Okay, here's the BKB. Is this... Adroit, it's not going to really get any better than this. So yeah, right they're away. like, all right, we, we just got to go. We don't have any vision, but we just got to try it. This is... Who they got to find? They got to find the Shaker if they can. We don't have any vessel charges, but we know we have to try. I mean, at least you've got the... You know, you got the aura. Friend of Roshan wow. as well, Boomy. He's becoming kind of obvious. Yeah, okay, so Mac can reveal himself. Boom in the pit. Yeah. Important. He needs to be there in this fight. You need a couple of lucky procs, and oh, they're gonna find FPZ. Uh, but FPZ's just tanking the gank. He's tanking them 1v5 currently. Mac gonna go for one better. Here comes Makoto. Boomy is gonna be the first target that the is there in the back lines. They already lose to Pugna. Oracle surviving a little bit longer, but here comes the auto attacks. Beyond Godlike for Makoto, losing a little bit of mana. They do have a Fiend's Grip on the troll over on the other side. Dreamy Cell, Spear coming back off in a second. Oh. 
Cole getting speared. Makoto in the back lines is getting vesseled up a little bit. Kezkeet still surviving. Mac going to be the next target. Natsumi was brought down on the other side of the fight. Uh, now they are about to lose Mac. Kezkeet gets the brain sap off. Boomy still chasing for him. Dream Cell with the mega kill streak. And uh, Boomy's Boomy. like, let me get the Bane. Please, I just want the Bane. But no. Oh, all Thomas coming out. All right, well, you're dead then, CML. See ya. And there's still control for this tiny. They didn't even need that much from the Morphling. And Boomy knows that they're done. They've, they've had enough. They've, they've taken their, their knocks this game. They gave it a shot with that Troll Warlord BKB. He just got fiends. That was the end of that. I'm struggling to find a flaw in Boom playing. Like, they're playing.